Hello, I'm Robin Worley, welcome to Lenscraft. This is the first video in a series of Affinity Photo tutorials. Today, we're going to be making sense of Affinity Photo by simplifying that confusing interface. Keep watching as there's lots to cover. The first thing you need to know about the Affinity interface is that it has something called personas. When you have an image open, you can switch between the different personas using these icons at the top left. We use each persona for a different editing purpose, and each has a different set of tools. Think of the personas as being specialised work areas set up with the tools you need. Reading the icons from left to right, the personas we have are the photo persona, which is general photo editing tools, quite like Photoshop. The liquify persona helps you stretch and deform objects in your photos. The develop persona, which is where we develop our raw files into photos. It's a bit like you do in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. But the tools in the develop persona aren't just restricted to raw files. You can use them to adjust any image file. In the tone mapping persona, we have tools you might use for HDR, but they can also be useful for general photography as well. Finally, we have the export persona, where we can export images to share with others. The important thing to remember is that each persona has a main purpose or function. As you switch between these personas, you'll see that the tools, the screens and the menus change. Some tools or menus are actually unique to a persona, but you'll find others in multiple personas like the navigator. Let's take a closer look at some of the personas. We're going to start by opening a RAW file I shot with a Fuji X-T2 camera. We'll open the file using the open command in the file menu. As this is a RAW file, Affinity Photo automatically opens it in the develop persona. This allows us to adjust the raw file and convert it into a bitmap image which we can work on in the other personas. If we'd open an image file rather than the raw file, Affinity Photo would have defaulted to the photo persona. Over to the left of the screen, we have the tools we can use to adjust the image. For example, we have the white balance tool which we can use to correct any colour cast in the image. We can use the magnifying glass icon to select the zoom tool and magnify an area. The blemish removal tool can be used to remove the birds in the sky. Over to the right, we have a series of windows and tools to help us adjust the photo. There are lots of windows here, but typically you'll only need around half of them. We can make changes to our image using adjustment controls. The objective of the developed persona should be to create a well-exposed base photo you can refine in the other personas. Along the top of the screen, we have some icons to help us when we adjust the image. For example, we have the split screen preview. Once we've applied our changes, we can develop the raw file into an image by clicking the develop button. Notice Affinity has now switched to the Photo Persona. This is a layer-based image editor which is a little like Photoshop. You can add a new empty layer using the layer menu. On the left of the screen we have the Tools palette. Here we can select tools like the Clone tool.
and we can use this to remove distractions from the beach. There's also a healing brush tool which we can also use to repair areas. And because we've made our repair to a new layer, we can turn the layer on and off. We can also add adjustment layers from the adjustments window, such as curves. What you see in the preview window is the image showing the sum of all the adjustment layers we've applied. We can also use lots of shortcut keys, many of which are the same as Photoshop. If I hold down Shift, Option, Command and press E, I create a new pixel layer which is the sum of all the other layers. When you have a pixel layer selected and you switch to another persona, the adjustments you make in that persona affect the layer you have selected. Here we have the new pixel layer selected and we can switch to the liquify persona. There are a lot of tools here to help you manipulate the objects in a scene. For example, we can distort the peer in the image. Or we can slim down the tower using the punch tool. When we've finished, we can apply the changes and they only affect the layer that we had selected. Let's delete that layer now. We then need to create a new one so we can look at the tone mapping persona. If we don't and we just select one of the adjustment layers, Affinity will complain. We can repeat our keyboard shortcut from before to create the new layer. Now we can select the tone mapping persona. On the left, we have some useful presets we can use. Let's select the high contrast black and white preset. Over on the right, we have some adjustment tools we can use. Once we're finished, click apply to apply the changes to the layer we had selected. With our photo complete, we can export it from Affinity Photo to produce an image file such as a JPEG or a GIF. If you want to produce an image, you need to use the export feature or the export persona. If you use File Save, you'll save the image in Affinity Photo format. If you want to keep your processing to perhaps work on or adjust an image further, you should save the image in Affinity Photo format. The easiest way to export the image is using File Export from the menu. You can select the format of the image you want to create. And then export the image. Today's video has been an overview. It's been all about helping you make sense of Affinity Photo. I hope some of the things I've demonstrated help make this great software easier to understand. As I said in the introduction, this is the first video in a series of Affinity Photo tutorials. If you haven't done so already, please take a moment to click the subscribe button so you don't miss future tutorials. 
I'm going to be using today's image in a few more of the Affinity tutorials. If you want to download the RAW file to follow along, I'll put the details in the video description below. If you enjoyed today's video, please like it and share it with others. I'm Robin Worley, you've been watching Lenscraft, and I'll see you next week for another Affinity Photo Tutorial. Thank you.